Hello, everybody. Welcome back to day two of our virtual vendor summit for November of this year, 2022. Uh, just a reminder, a couple of reminders. One is we will have a survey for you to complete at the end of the summit that we'll be sharing the link to on IRC and Slack um, and in the Zoom chat. And I think we'll have it on a slide at the end of this of the summit as well. And also, please, please feel free to join us over in the hallway track in between talks. And after the summit is over, we might hang out and chat for there after uh, this afternoon as well. Um, with all that said, our first talk this morning is going to be from Hiroki Sato. So I'm going to hand it over to Hiroki. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, just a sec to make the screen available. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's get started my presentation. Um, I'm Hiroki Sato, uh, the developer of the FreeBSD and the board member, one of the board members of the FreeBSD Foundation. And uh, today I will uh, introduce um, activities and the market of FreeBSD in Japan as uh, titled and shown on this slide. And uh, I already uploaded uh, this slide to the wiki page, so uh, please uh, Precede the uh, PDF if you have a difficulty with reading the uh, slides uh, via Zoom or uh, streaming. It, uh, some uh, sentences are written in the smaller, uh, small letters, so uh, please see the PDF instead. Okay. So I will talk about the two things. So one is, uh, yes, uh, previously in Japan and uh, with the market. Uh, related two topics. One is uh, history and uh, how the uh, market looks like uh, today. So to understand the uh, use of FreeBSD in Japan, um, you need to understand the, uh, what people were involved in the uh, Unix market in say that's 30 years ago and no, 40 years ago so um because the developers who are familiar with bsd is still uh in the big company in japan and they're doing the uh, unix related things or linux related things uh, because uh, uh there are several reasons to uh reasons for them to change their job of the BSD related job to the non BSD related job. So, uh, first half, I will explain the uh, such a background of, of BSD in Japan. And after that, I have uh, had uh, uh, learning, I, I have had uh, many conversations with uh, Japanese vendors in uh, these, I think, uh, over 10 years as a uh, board member of the FreeBSD Foundation and as a, a committer of the FreeBSD or as a just a user of the FreeBSD in the Japanese community. So uh, throughout the uh, communication with enterprise FreeBSD users, uh, I have uh, several ideas and uh, I have uh, stories that can be shared with you about my success and the failures. So uh, I will uh, I I want to share such an experience for um, uh, discussions. Uh, how do we do for uh, more? Uh, do we do to improve the relationship with uh, enterprise previously users, not only in Japan? Okay. So first of all, I, let me introduce myself first. At the uh, I joined the FreeBSD project around the 2000. After that, I joined, uh, uh, I served as a coaching member after 2006 uh, and uh, for 16 years and uh, 2020 uh, until the 2022. And uh, before joining the FreeBSD project as a commuter, uh, around the two, uh, around the 1998, um, I joined the FreeBSD Japanese uh, user group called uh, Japan FreeBSD User Group on the middle of on this slide. And uh, they have, uh, they replicated 
uh, we produce the same structure of the FreeBSD uh, project. I mean, uh, they have a uh, uh, CVS tree, a uh, CVS repository, and uh, for for Japanese users, and uh, they have uh, uh, committers to Japanese local CVS repository to uh, get uh, more people uh, for the FreeBSD development or uh, uh, activities like a translation that cannot be uh, imported to the main CVS tree uh, directly. So uh, proof reading or uh, checking the uh, build, uh, uh, checking the uh, if it built successfully uh, on the by using the local CVS repository. So the after the two years, I joined the FreeBSD project, and my day job is an assistant professor at the Tokyo Tech, and it it is uh, not uh, closely related to the software technology. And uh, my research field covers uh, integrator circuit, and the uh, transistor level circuit, and a much lower level than software. And uh, I cover uh, my research field covers the. Um, uh, emitter the system or uh, operating the system and the, uh, around the uh, boundary of the hardware and the software. Okay, so uh, let me move on to the short history of the FreeBSD. And uh, before the FreeBSD history, uh, 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 let me let me uh, introduce the Japanese industry uh, first. So uh, this is not uh, Related to the FreeBSD, uh, but uh, you do you need to understand the uh, start point of the Japanese industry. The first uh, 60s to 70s, uh, Japanese industry, Japanese learned the microprocessor from the US, of course, and the electrical circuit, the processors, and the, almost all of the concepts are imported to Japan in this uh, time frame, just after the World, World, World War II. And the Japanese vendors started to develop the electric calculator by using the microprocessor technology. In the same time, same time frame in the US, the most of the microprocessors were for military purpose or space industry, not in the consumer uh, industry. However, in Japanese uh, market, uh, electric calculator was uh, was the driver of um, um, electronic device market, and uh, it uh, make the other related industry uh, growing continuously. So uh, in this era, we know what is the semiconductor, uh, what the semiconductor is, and how to design the semiconductor and integrated circuit. And uh, ten years after, we we started to try to design our own computer. Of course, the concept of a computer were in uh, imported from the U.S. too. However, in 70s to 80s, uh, we have a uh, um, knowledge about the semiconductor and the processors, and the Japanese government wants to build a, a, our own uh, system. So DIPS is um, uh, one of the famous uh, national projects. The DIPS stands for the uh, Denden Kosha Information Processing System. The Denden Kosha is a Japanese word that uh, indicates a company name, the government company name. And it is uh, it means in English, uh, government company for telephone and telegraph. So the this this system is uh this system was built for processing the telegraph automatically, and it has uh uh as of nineteen eighty one nineteen seventy one, it has uh, a multi processor uh, capability surprisingly, and it has two hundred fifty six megabyte uh, virtual memory address. And it it is a uh, quite ambitious uh, system, and it it actually developed and uh, and the photo on the right hand side shows the actual uh, implementation and the hardware, 
uh, you can see in the museum in the Tokyo. And the uh, operating system was written in the University uh, of Tokyo, and uh, it called uh, C Toronto as uh, within the PL1. So a uh, Wino processor at this point. And uh, this project is important because a lot of big electronic company in Japan, including the Hitachi, Toshiba, uh, Fujitsu, uh, you know uh, these names. And uh, they are involving, they were involving this project to get uh, knowledge and a resource to develop the computer system. So after 80s, they started to use uh, cell on the design and cell workstations for office automation. The depth was for a uh, telegraph uh, automation system that's special device and not available in the normal market. So they uh, develop a vendor specific uh, processor in the workstations for a normal uh, consumer market. So uh, two photos are shown on the, build, the uh, lower side of the slice. The right hand side one is the Sony's workstation. It is uh, 30 years ago and uh, it was built with uh, a Motorola uh, 68000 and uh, later uh, the architecture is switched uh, with uh, uh, MIPS architecture. And the left, si left hand side shows the uh, not so uh, exciting uh, photo, but uh, it is uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, workstation released by NAC called the EWS 4800 series, and it, it uses uh, MIPS architecture. And the operating systems for them are not domestic uh, ones. So for DIPS, we developed, Japanese developed uh, on OS, uh, independently from the Unix or other operating system. But uh, for a uh, consumer market, uh, we used the slightly modified version of the System 5 or uh, BSD uh, base, uh, BSD itself, uh, modified version of BSD. The reason why uh, we did not develop our own OS independent from the Unix is uh, the important point for a consumer, a consumer market or office automation was that we needed to localize the Unix OS, I, I localize the OSs. So we can develop the uh, entire OSs, a whole OSs, However, it, it required uh, more costs and manpower. So we decided to use, we use the existing um, uh, performance OS and uh, localized it instead. So Japanese op operating systems were used on these workstations. And uh, for office automation, as described, uh, Japanese, uh, a Japanese document processing or a displaying Japanese is uh, a quite essential uh, functionality. That and uh, most of the Unix OS, the imported Unix OS, did not support the non Latin based uh, character handling. And uh, there were no UDFA to a Unicode at the time. So we need to build the character set and we need to build the encoding. So um, that costs a lot uh, to the vendors. However, uh, we were using the Japanese version of Unix OSs. So the, in the case of Sony workstations, uh, it, it was discontinued around 1998, but uh, their OS, uh, it is called the News OS, but it, it's uh, just a uh, Japanese version of the 4.2 uh, BSD. And uh, NEC uh, adopt the System 5 release 4 at some point, but uh, both uh, uh, these kind of system were popular in uh, eight, uh, nine, uh, 80s to uh, 
mid 90s in Japan. So this means that, that there are a lot of developers who know BSD or uh, Unix at this time frame in the Japanese market. And after that late 90s, as you know, the PC uh, uh, software called the PC Unix emerged the combination of the commodity uh, hardware and uh, uh, Unix operating system compiled for uh, such a hardware. Now, this combination <clears throat> became quite popular to build the internet service like the web server at the time. And uh, in this time frame, the workstations, <clears throat> domestic workstations disappeared because, excuse me, because uh, PC Unix is uh, much cheaper and enough uh, in terms of the performance. So the market no longer required the uh, workstations available in the 80s or 90s. So uh, at around the 90s, so PC Unix emerged uh, FreeBSD or Linux or NetBSD or um, so BSD derived uh, operating system that can run on PC becomes uh, became the, quite popular. The, it was uh, around the, uh, 1995 to uh, 2000. And I repeatedly emphasized that there were a lot of Japanese developers who knew BSD well in the companies like NEC or Sony. And uh, at the same time, in this time frame, the PC Unix emerged. This means that uh, normal people who are not in the company can uh, uh, can have the hardware that run that can run Unix operating system. So local community was uh, formed. Uh, local community, including the Japanese FreeBSD uh, user group, was formed around the two, uh, yeah, 1996, I think. And after that, uh, the activities were pretty uh, act, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good, and it produced uh, some notable results, including the Kamiya BB6. This is um, uh, implement trying just an attempt to uh, implement the full IPv6 uh, stack by using the BSD and uh, intended to uh, use the uh, BSD based IPv6 stack for uh, as a reference implementation. And so uh, many Japanese other uh, uh, companies were involved in this project and they use the FreeBSD as a foundation for um, uh, designing their IPv6 capable system. And another one is a uh, power project. The power project is uh, was for uh, adding the support of the ACPI and the mobile device support. And this time frame in 1998 to 2004 to 2005, there are a lot of uh, small gadgets in Japan, uh, the battery driven gadget and the hot plug-in interface like a uh, PC card or so Firewire or uh, this kind of uh, uh, complex devices that FreeBSD did not have support. So uh, local community uh, had a lot of meetings and uh, some of the developers who Knows a FreeBSD well, uh, develop the code and uh, test uh, a lot of uh, test with uh, a lot of devices that are uh, available in the Japanese market, and eventually uh, these uh, results were up upstreamed to the project. So uh, this this kind of activities are backed by the number of developers 
from the ancient era around the 80s and the 90s. So these community were driven by, uh, not by the young people and the experienced the developer uh, whose job was uh, BS, uh, developing the BSD uh, derived op uh, BSD based operating system for a uh, big electric company in Japan. However, at the same time, I, at the same time frame, at in 2000, uh, big players in the Japanese industry, electronic device manufacturer, made announcement that declared that they would support Linux as their business foundation. That these announcements were made at not made at once, did not made at once, and independently uh, by each companies but uh, they have uh, some kind of they had some kind of agreement at the time that the reason why they declare this kind of announcement was that uh, at as of 2000 they no longer are were interested in workstation industry or uh, operating uh, selling the operating system or developing their own implementation. And uh, looking for uh, software, they can rely on. And uh, 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 performant uh, uh, sufficient for their purpose. And uh, before 2000, so Linux was, um, uh, this appeared on a discussion of the uh, in a context of the open source and a company using the open source will get uh, um, so better uh, results due to the reducing the cost of uh, developing the OS all OS inside the company. Well, this kind of a story uh, were uh, popular uh, just before the 2000, and uh, these companies were decided to uh, these companies decided to uh, use Linux. Of course, there were BSD derived operating system at the time, but uh, that were uh, they were ignored just because this is not a. Uh, disclosed uh, that reason was not disclosed but the one of the reason was the lawsuit they as of the 1998 that was not settled and the uh, the future war, future of bsd was uh unclear to uh these companies so linux was well, uh, only one a choice at the time so this announcement uh, has a big impact on the community and the people who were working on the BSD. After 2005, the community, the FreeBSD users community, the developer communities in Japan started to shrink because uh, education for new recruit of the uh, big company were handled by uh, these uh, companies listed in the previous slide. So Hitachi or Toshiba or NEC or uh, Fujitsu, they built a um, facility for education. And uh, they uh, used that facility uh, uh, without uh, restriction for the uh, company's boundary because they the they need the education for Linux, uh, even if that they are uh, not in the same uh, under the same umbrella. So they have an edu a single education system that teach uh, teaches the Linux things as. Um, a new vehicle of education and using uh, uh, Linux. So young people 
on the scale of people are hired by the big companies will have an education, this kind of education. So uh, young people do not, uh, they cannot know the other OSs after the degradation of the, uh, we, are, you, we will use Linux by the big companies. And at the same time, experienced developers went to the non BSD business because uh, their companies decide to use Linux, even for their uh, internal mail server or uh, web server. So everything must be on Linux. That is a top decision, uh, top down decision of the big companies. So in the community, uh, there, uh, there is no longer a reason for the even for the de experienced the developers to uh, keep up with joining the uh, community. So number of uh, people are still um, uh, decreasing, unfortunately. So the big companies are still uh, drive uh, their adoption of Linux. So the developers uh, cannot decide the uh, what technology is used for their business or for their purpose in the OS level. And uh, it is difficult for the young people to know or learn the BSD. And uh, I, the, the second half of this slide is listed uh, my attempts to get more people in the community after 2004 to 2005. I started to hold the AGBSD con in 2007 and I held the 14 times in over um, about 20 years. And uh, I am keeping up with uh, a monthly meetup in the Tokyo area and uh, now eventually held in the previous workshop and uh, it is held in uh, 91 times. And uh, we have uh, several Japanese forums because the language barrier is uh, uh, quite big. So we need uh, forums or uh, communication channel in Japanese. And uh, maintaining the, this kind of a channel we know the how many numbers actually uh, interested in the previous in Japan, and the numbers are listed on this slide. And uh, about the one thousand to two thousand in this order, we will get the uh, social media. But uh, almost all of the people are uh, uh, fourteen years old, fifty years old. So uh, developers in the eighties uh, or nineties or the old era. And uh, 100 at the uh, conferences and uh, 20, um, around the 20 at the uh, monthly meetups. So uh, based on the, uh, this, uh, this uh, Japanese history, I will uh, share the conversations with the Japanese enterprise previous users so far. And uh, BSD is um, becoming less popular in Japan, unfortunately, but uh, there are uh, users, uh, still users in Japan, and I have a conversation with them. And uh, throughout the activities to uh, have a talk with them, I categorize their motivation, their needs, and the, uh, how they feel about the privacy. So this is a diagram uh, the, the, this slide shows the a simple diagram that rectangular means a uh, company. So it's the factory, the BBT, and I will show the uh, details of the, each companies, but the rectangular uh, represents the company. And the vertical axis means why they are using BSD. Top one, ST factory has the passion. So they love FreeBSD. That's the reason why to use FreeBSD. And uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, companies at the bottom of this slide, like NAC or KDDI Web Communication, WC, they have a reason in, the, in their business. 
the vigorous the customer is using the FreeBSD, so we need to uh, prepare the FreeBSD or something like that. So the categorization is uh, uh, more, more specific categorization is listed on this slide. So far, um, our conversations with vendors in, uh, in Japan, I can categorize all of the conversation into four listed on this slide. First one is passion. Second one is inertia. Inertia sounds negative, but uh, a lot of users said uh, they are they are still using a free vested course. There is no reason to change. In the first place, they have uh, some specific uh, reason, but they have a lot of um, accumulated experience, accumulated software resource required for the, uh, their business using the FreeBSD. So it is difficult to change the system. So that, is, that reflects the word, no reason to change, but uh, I think this can be categorized by using the word inertia. And the third one is superiority. In terms of performance, in terms of the usability, or uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, specifics, but uh, I think I can categorize them into the superiority because previously was the best in terms of something. And then last one is uh, they have no choice and it customer decided everything. And then in addition to the four categories, uh, their use case can be uh, classified into two uh, types. One is uh, they want to complete POSIX compatible OS. Another is uh, they want component in a FreeBSD. Component means the, they use uh, kernel only or uh, one of the kernels of systems, or they are using uh, just a libc only, or header file only, or uh, user line utility, one of the util one user line utility. So uh, after uh, categorizing the use cases and the motivation, uh, some comments from uh, are listed in the bottom uh, lower side of the slide. The for vendors who want the complete OS, uh, information in Japanese or commercial support service they want are uh, top uh, items of their needs. And the second one, the component level uh, VUs of the FreeBSD, uh, they want a contact to ask a question or upstreaming their uh, uh changes so uh, they need uh how they need to know the how to engage the project or completely um have no idea about in the engaging the a project so following slides shows uh, shows the individual uh vendors but uh, it takes a long time so i will uh, pick up the some uh sentences from these slides so first one in the internet initiative japan it is uh, one of the largest isp in japan and uh, categorized as the passion and the component they love vsd and actually they are using a net vsd extensively but uh, a component level they uh develop they have their own development team that can understand the kernel level uh, development and uh, they build the high performance router based on the NetBSD and the, as shown on the uh, right hand side photo. And uh, I have a good relationship with them and uh, they donate an AJBSD con and uh, they understand how the open source project works and uh, how important to important of uh, the donation to the uh, project or uh, development activities. And the second one is uh, Sakura Internet. This is um, normal 
uh, internet service provider and the uh, hosting uh, provider. Uh, you can imagine in your uh, local market in a similar uh, uh, service. And uh, this uh, service offers the BSD system image for their uh, hosting uh, service. And uh, we can uh, choose the FreeBSD and uh, use the uh, virtual uh, server based on the FreeBSD. And uh, the uh, that com this company is categorized to the passion and uh, they want the complete OS that can run on, on the KVM, unfortunately. So they are running in the, v uh, in the Linux on the bare metal and uh, offering the previously based uh, uh, virtual private server on KVM. But uh, uh, the founder loves the FreeBSD. So this is the the reason why they are still providing a previous D and that this is categorized as a passion. And it's still factory. This is the top of this uh, top of the previous slide. And it is a passion. But uh, these this company that's small, but run by the two of the previous commuters in the building the website. But uh, they have a difficulty with using the FreeBSD as a core uh, OS for their purpose because the website technologies are. Uh, uh, tends to be uh, Linux centric. So uh, sometimes FreeBSD does not able to, uh, is not able to do what they want. So uh, some inertia is there, but uh, they are still using the FreeBSD and the complete OS is required. And again, they have communications on, this is uh, another, kind of another type of ISPs. But uh, this hosting provider is providing the FreeBSD only. The reason why they are using the FreeBSD is there are customers who want FreeBSD. For example, the quite old system running FreeBSD, say uh, seven release or the eight release, they are still serving the seven or eight environment. But uh, their business, the target, one of the targets of the, their business is supporting such an old environment. Of course, it is on uh, that, that they are uh, running the previous day on the virtual environment, uh, but uh, supporting the old uh, previous day systems are uh, one of the, their core business. And uh, they are uh, currently providing the uh, a bunch of machines and network resources for tier one mirror in Japan right now. And the uh, broadband tower, it, it is uh, uh, written as a BBT in the previous line as a passion. This is a uh, uh, data center service provider. And I have a conversation with them and the uh, head of the laboratory is uh, one of the uh, FreeBSD lovers. So they he want to donate something. However, uh, the, there is no uh, business relationship and there is no business needs in uh, Broadband Tower, unfortunately. So I am uh contacting him and uh, keeping up with a good relationship but uh one still wondering uh what uh, should be uh, uh what should we provide or what kind of relationship we have to maintain with him but uh i got the donation of the machine resources Hey, this is uh, one thing uh, you are probably you are interested in. So Sony Interactive Entertainment it is a manufacturer of gaming console. And uh, he, probably you know they are using the FreeBSD. And uh, more specifically, they are using the FreeBSD kernel. 9.0 in the PlayStation 4 and 11.0 in the PlayStation 5. And uh, they have a um, develop, development team in the Japan headquarter. And uh, there are a lot of developers uh, who are involving in the PlayStation development, but the decision making is made in uh, Japan headquarter. And uh, I have um, 
um, I have been discussing with the uh, uh, developers in uh, Sony, and uh, hopefully we can disclose the uh, they are using the FreeBSD officially, and uh, I want to build up the relationship uh, between the internal development team and the FreeBSD project. Uh, say uh, upstreaming the patches from their team to uh, FreeBSD tree, but uh, discussion was uh, got stuck because uh, they are uh, too busy to handle the current release of the PlayStation Five. Uh, I, uh, I am not sure uh, you know the details of the development status, but the PlayStation Five has about several problems that, and the developing developing team still working on uh, fixing the uh, problem after the release. So. Uh, resuming to resume the discussion, we need uh, we need some more time, but I I will try to get them uh, to engage the project. Okay, so let me summarize the uh, lessons learned throughout the conversation. Uh, first, I try to uh, ask a donation of financial support, but uh, it did not work. Especially in Asia, uh, there are no uh, business custom of a charity or donation. So uh, they need some reason to support and uh, bid under the business relationship. So uh, we need to know uh, what they want and uh, uh, what we can provide. And uh, even in a, a quite small thing, uh, such a relationship, uh, without a, such a relationship, we cannot continue the discussion. So even if they love the FreeBSD, uh, it is not so easy to build the business relationship. But after realizing this, uh, I changed the strategy to have a conversation with the vendors and uh, I got a civil uh, donation of the machine resources instead of financial support or some other uh, uh, results after, um, uh, after the conversation. So lastly, I, this, this, these are, uh, one of my suggestions about how to promote the FreeBSD uh, as a, a summary of uh, what I talked in the previous slide. Uh, first one is uh, users that think the FreeBSD has a complete performance OS, like the KDDI web communication. It is an old fashioned internet service provider. Uh, we need to be you need to be aware of the, what middleware they are using because they are not interested in the improvement of FreeBSD itself. They are interested in software running on FreeBSD. So they run free flawlessly. Uh, they are satisfied. However, if uh, some of the middleware doesn't run community uh, don't that doesn't run on FreeBSD, they are frustrated or consider to switch the OS. So we need to be aware of the, what middleware we want to support or we should spend time more, uh, time or money more. And another um, another type of uh, users that thinks that uh, FreeBSD as toolkit or reusable software component collection. So these, uh, uh, these users are using the specific part of the FreeBSD. It may be kernel, it may be a library only. So maybe it is uh, not so uh, high priority, but uh, it is worth investing in improving reusability if possible. Reusability means in this case, the uh, you can understand the reusability by reading the about it list on the lower side of this slide. In FPSD, the RAMP kernel, any kernel, is one of the good examples to reuse the kernel on another system. And in OpenBSD, OpenSSH is a component 
uh, reusable component. They say the OpenSSH is a part of the OpenBSD, but the other people think the OpenSSH is an independent software. It is uh, maintained in a portable way. And uh, for FreeBSD, one of the examples is the Open Fastpass project. It is maintaining the FreeBSD network stack that can be used in the user land. This is uh, one of the examples of the uh, uh, reusability of the uh, software. And the last one is uh, probably we need to be aware of the users uh, thinks the FreeBSD as one can do something as Linux in a better way. So for that, it is difficult for us to uh, make things in a perfect way, but the feature parity is uh, one of the way and you know, one of the things we can invest. Uh, probably, uh, in the, of course, we cannot do everything in a limited resource, in a money or manpower. However, uh, we are still um, uh, be aware of uh, these aspects or promoting a FreeBSD. In all cases, I think we need to maintain a working example people can try easily as, a, as say, a system image they can try. And I call this a FreeBSD showcase. We are providing a Bluetooth image only and just installing the FreeBSD and the, uh, people need to install the third-party software to build um, um a system however uh we if we are providing the as a complete project OS or as a toolkit or as a, a linux replacement uh we can uh, if we pro we are providing a specific uh, system image for specific scenarios uh, people can understand how the pre uh, how useful the previous is or the how uh, how much uh, the FreeBSD is uh, working sufficiently for their purpose. So I think these uh, uh, things is uh, what we should be aware of. So this is a, a last slide of this talk. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Hiroki. That was very interesting. A lot of comments from folks on IRC because there's a lot of history that many of us didn't know. Um, it was really neat to learn. Uh, I'm going to wait a couple minutes to see if anybody has any questions. I haven't seen any questions so far. Just a lot of positive comments on what you've talked about. So I don't see any questions, um, but probably, I know we'll mention it later, but it is worth mentioning that um, you're planning to, to host Asia BSC Con again this year, I believe. Yes, of course. And uh, I'm sorry for the delay and uh, making an announcement and I will make an announcement in 24 hours. I will right. prepare <laughs> Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Hiroki. Okay, well, thank you very much, Hiroki, for your talk. Um, and we'll go ahead and take our first break of the day. Um, for folks who want to, I'll be over in the hallway track and we can talk more about whatever comes up. And we'll be back here uh, in about 25 minutes or so. So see you all in a bit. <laughs>